well, Mount Pleasant, it is time for us to get into the word of God. God, it's now we thank you for another opportunity to study your word. God, we ask now that you open our hearts, open our minds and open our ears so that we can hear, feel and experience what you have for us today. God, I ask now that you fill us with the hope of you so that we will never leave from this moment the same. It's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, I want to thank Pastor Johnson so much again for this opportunity to uh, be before us on this virtual platform sharing in Bible study. I do not take this opportunity lightly. Um, with that being said, um, also, you know, let's 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 throw some claps and some hearts up in the comment section for our pastor who um, is taking a much needed break and allowing us young puppies to uh, get a chance to uh, explore and express our gifts and convictions of Christ this way. So I thank him so much for that opportunity and grateful that he is able to get a break and rest from the labor that he loved to do so much. So with that being said, let us let us revisit Matthew chapter five, starting in verse one, and we will go down through verse 12. And the Bible reads this way. One day, as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him and he began to teach. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those who are pure in heart, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. Matthew chapter five, verses one through 12. Being that this is part two of the God of those people, we learned last week the feeling of being those people. And as we had tiptoed into this introduction to the Sermon of the Mount, um, there's a very simple, there's a very simple takeaway um, that Jesus wants us to get from this lesson that before God will bless you, you must be in, you must endure the process of being those people. It's at this point in Jesus's ministry, he has traveled all through Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. And as we learned last week, the gospel of the kingdom is the hope of God. Jesus couldn't preach the good news of Easter morning because at that point, Easter had not taken place or Resurrection Sunday for those that are more spiritual people. Um, so proclaiming his resurrection before his resurrection is not the, the gospel of the kingdom. So it's here that Jesus wanted us to understand that all that Jesus has and presents is from his father above. And it's there that your hope should lie. It's in God that we are offered such rewards and such treasures for our present suffering. And now, you know, we learned that Jesus had went through all of Galilee and gets to this point. The word had spread through Syria and those people had flocked to him in order for them to get what they need to be restored. And Jesus wasn't afraid to be with them. As we learned, Jesus stood up and got, Jesus stood up and proclaimed this gospel of the kingdom to the multitude. And it was a tough feeling for us to digest that Jesus, knowing all of the needs that were being presented to him, Jesus, knowing all of the ailments that were being in front of him, Jesus, knowing the heart of each person that was in front of him, Jesus, knowing the body of each person being in front of him. And he simply gives up and gives them a sense of hope. Scripture reads, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And I like this one. Uh, verse four, a little bit more, because it really portrays the hope that Jesus is trying to give us. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And again, imagine being confined to an area based off of what's on you. Imagine feeling secluded, lonely, out of touch, broken and sick, pained by the plagues of adversity of a crooked system that does not allow you to have the rights and privileges based off of what's on you. It's, it's here, Jesus 
teaches this crowd a very simple but heartbreaking lesson that again echoes the essence of Romans 8 and 18, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory of which will be revealed in us because God gives us hope in darkness. Jesus comes to a multitude of people who are looking for something tangible and gives them hope. And here we learn the feeling of those people because we understood that it is not a great feeling to be a part of a blessed people. It's a harsh reality that in order for me to be a part of a blessed people, I have to feel the pain and burdens of life in order to appreciate the blessings that I will receive at the time when that time comes. So let us scroll down and we're going to talk through the rewards of these people, the rewards of these people, because I need us to understand without proper process, there is no reward without knowing defeat. You would never know how to overcome it. It's here. We get to look at what rewards are presented to people that hope while God's will is being done. So as we look at the, the let's, let's just look at verse four. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Um, every year, every year, sports teams across the nation begin their season with the road to championship because every team starts with the thought that they want to win, but only one team wins. However, the other teams that did not win learned very valuable lessons on some how to's and some how nots about getting towards the reward. With the NCAA finals just concluding and seeing that these teams had battled a pandemic, social injustice while pressing towards their goal, um, and it's such a glorious view of the goal, this road to the championship, seeing these teams labor and triumph and even have some sadness and some dark moments and overcome them. However, there's a team that sticks out to me more than any of the other teams this year, and that was Gonzaga. And I, like most of you, thought that Gonzaga would win it all. They had some blowout wins. They had some close battles, even had an electric goal-saving game winner. But in the championship, they fell short of the goal. This is important because Gonzaga has not lost a game all season. Losing their first game where it mattered most. This, this Zags team had not lost a game all year until they got to the championship game. Imagine how they felt not obtaining the ultimate prize after such an amazing journey. They hadn't lost a game all year, but I'd like to argue that the very essence of this text is presented in the Zags journey because it's at this point that this team didn't even realize that the journey had more value than the dream. The reward the Zags received was more valuable than they can know because it reminded them that per perfection is impossible, but striving for anything less is indeed failure because the reward of your inconsistency is missed opportunity. I don't want you to have an inconsistent hope in God that says, when I need God, I hope, but when my life is smooth, it's all me. I don't want you to miss out on the rewards of God because of your inconsistent hope in God, because your rewards are directly connected to the hope that you have in God. So the rewards of these people is also the affliction of these people because the affliction of what you go through is directly connected to the blessing that God has for you on the other side. But in the middle, there is some hope that has to take place in order for God to continue moving in you and you continue moving for God. It, an inconsistent hope will bring you to Jesus expecting healing and get medicine and you're focused on how long it will take the medicine to work. I mean, look at the text. This is what happens when you have a savior such as Jesus and a God like our God, you present your little problems to an omnipresent, omniscient God who understands and knows your problems, knows your needs, knows your feelings, but more often than not, 
Those are the reasons that we have hope at all. Life cannot be lived without transition, ups, downs, highs, and lows. It also cannot be endured without hope. The reason why suicide is so high is because they have lost the hope inside of them. The hope that they could be who they see in the mirror. The hope that they could be who people proclaim them to be. The reason why suicide is so high is because they've lost hope in themselves more than they have lost hope in the world. The reason why relationships fail is because they've secretly lost hope of anything being better than the current moment. True hope understands that longer is not harder. It just means more steps. I work in a school system now. And I was walking through the hallways and noticed a teacher working with a specific student. And this student uh, is, on a early, is on a learning plan and was having some issues with math. Uh, this teacher made it a point to encourage the student without doing the work for the student. This student complained about how hard the problem is, how confused it made the student, and even how it made the student feel. The student was visibly upset about this math problem. Teacher looking down at the student, allowing them to vent, release all the frustrations towards the issue, and simply says, what makes this problem harder? And it's at that point you would have thought that the student wouldn't have had a very good answer. You would have thought that the student kind of would have just been like, well, you know, it's hard. Um, it's math, it's hard. No, the student had a valid reply there's more numbers for me to look at. There are steps that I have to do twice. And then once I get to the end, I still have to simplify. And this teacher simply replies, sounds like it's just longer than you're used to, which means it's not harder. It will just take longer. Some of us are going to miss opportunities with God because it will take us longer to go in the direction that you already have the map to. Don't miss out on the rewards God has granted for you in heaven because you can't receive the blessing of process that unlocks these rewards. Life is God's life is God blessing you with process that builds a hope for completion that's rooted in the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this is echoed here in the text in Philippians 2 and 12. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now even more in my absence, continue to work on your salvation. So here's how I want to help us and let us understand the rewards of these people. So for those note takers or the comment people that we have in the comments today, here's what I need us to do. I need you to write, God bless you. And then I want you to put a blank space right there. God bless you blank space, comma, for you will be comforted. Because look at the sentence structure of the text. Last week, we looked at God blesses those, and we understood how God blesses those, and we understood the feeling of being that. Now let's look at the rewards of that. Look at this. The text says, God bless you. Insert your problem in the blank space, comma, you will be comforted. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. God blesses you, insert your issue, you will be comforted. Look at how Jesus presents how God will comfort you and protect you and hold you and sustain you while you're going through what you're going through. The reward of these people is being connected to a God that will never allow you to sink in what God has placed you in. It may feel like you're sinking. It may feel like it's too much. The grief may feel like it is overcoming you, but if you can remain connected to the hope that you have in God, you will get the rewards that God has for you. And here's my last illustration for this text tonight, and I will bid you a good evening. I was, I was thinking the other day about a lady who I talked to, and this lady was getting her life together. I mean, she is on a up and up. She is, she's, a, she's a student now. She's got a new job. She's, uh, she's moved out of the place she was in. Um, she was having some issues there, and she wouldn't apply to another place after she got her credit together, got her money up, and this mother got there and got put on the waiting list. And while on that waiting list, this mother was bouncing around from couch to couch, home to home, 
hotel to hotel, all while waiting to get a call that a space was available. And all while waiting on the waiting list, life got harder. Finding a place to sleep got harder. Finding a place of comfort got harder. Finding a place of recharge got harder. But because she stayed focused on what was already presented to her, I have a place to go. I have a place to stay. I have a place that is specifically designed for me. All I have to do is continue my hope that presses me towards the mark of the higher calling that I will get there at the appointed time that God has for me. So let us live and live and leave with that. Again, I don't want to leave us with anything that'll make us shout. I don't want to leave us with anything that's going to make us feel like God could do it right now. What I need us to hold on to is that the, the rewards of those people is the hope that they can have in God. Because I know that God has done it before because the text tells us very clearly right here in verse 12, rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven for the same way they were persecuted the same way they prosecuted the prophets who were before you, which means the prophets before me have gone through hardship. They have experienced the need for hope and God has given them what they needed, but they could not get that reward without hope. So the reward is hope. And what you need is hope. Be blessed. God, we thank you for this opportunity to share and study, God. I know that this lesson was different. It is not the same presentation that we are accustomed to or the cute and shouty way to go through these beatitudes. But God, I ask now that you fill us with a hope that reminds us that everything we have is because of you. Everything that we get is because of you. Every breath that we take is because of you. So when those breaths get harder to take, God, my hope is built on the fact that you are still the same. God, you have never changed. So God, bless us now, even as some of us have lost our hope due to the pandemic. God, bless us now, even though some of us have lost our hope because of our financial situation. God, bless us now, even though some of us have lost our hope because of our relationship. God, we ask now that you cover us, lead us, and guide us, and fill us with the hope that this text reminds us of. The blessed are those. We're going to insert our own problems and know that we'll be comforted because of the hope that we have built in you, because our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness because our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' suffering and his record for never failing. So God, now as we leave from this virtual space to return here on Sunday morning to experience word and worship on a virtual platform, we ask that you bless us, cover us, lead us and guide us as we make our way back here. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.